So please make sure you pause the video and try this question on your own before moving on. For part A, we're going to draw a free body diagram of the balloon. It turns out that there are three forces acting on the balloon. We have the weight of the balloon itself acting downward. We have the weight of the helium that is inside the balloon also acting downward. And then of course we have the upward acting buoyant force because the balloon is immersed in a fluid. In this case the fluid would be air. For part B of the question we can write down the equation for the buoyant force. The buoyant force is equal to the density of the surrounding fluid times g times the volume of the submerged portion of the object. In some cases, the object is only partially submerged in a fluid. For example, if you had a ball floating at the surface of a body of water. In this case, however, the volume submerged will be the entire volume of the balloon because the balloon is completely submerged in air. We really can't even draw a line to represent air because it's just everywhere. So hopefully it's clear that the entire balloon in this particular problem is completely submerged in the surrounding fluid, which happens to be air. So we're going to adjust the volume submerged to call it the volume of the entire balloon. And to do that, we'll just call it VB. Now the density of air was given to us in the question as was the volume of the balloon, so we can plug those in. All the values are already in their standard units, so we don't have to do any conversions. We can just use our calculators. And we would obtain 4.11 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons. Because the buoyant force is indeed a force, we measure it in newtons, and that is the correct answer to part B of the question. Now, for part C of the question, we are asked to calculate the net force acting on the balloon. Now, of course, the concept of net force is easy to understand. It just means to sum all the forces acting in the y direction in this case. We have three forces, as noted earlier. The buoyancy force is pointing upward, so that's a positive force. The weight of the helium is downward and is therefore negative, And the weight of the balloon is also downward and is therefore negative. So let's fill in those three forces into the sum of the forces in the y direction. It turns out we can then replace the weights with a slightly different expression. We recall that weight is equal to mass times g. But we also know that mass is the same thing as the density of an object times its volume. So technically we could also write the weight as the density times the volume times g. So those are two different but equally valid expressions for the weight. We're going to replace the weight of the helium with this expression and the weight of the balloon with this expression simply because we know slightly different information about them. So let's do that. Notice that the helium completely occupies the balloon, so we can actually change the volume of helium to simply the volume of the balloon itself. And at this point, all of the values are known, so we can plug them in. Notice that for the buoyant force, we plugged in the previously calculated value. So now we can just compute this on our calculators. And you end up with 1.33 times 10 to the positive 3 newtons. Notice that you end up with a positive result. So that's going to mean that the balloon, with an overall net force in the positive y direction, will be accelerating upward. Now in part D, it looks like there will be an additional mass that's being added to the balloon so that the balloon ends up in equilibrium. Because of the additional mass, we're going to have an additional gravitational force acting downward. So let's add that to the diagram. We've colored it in blue so it stands out, and that gravitational force would just be m times g. So now we can go back to the sum of the forces in the y direction. And we're going to fill in basically the same forces as before, except we're going to have a negative mg into the equation this time. Notice that we've enclosed in parentheses the buoyant force, the weight of the helium, and the weight of the balloon, because we have already calculated those three forces added together in part c of the question. Also notice that because the balloon is now in equilibrium, the sum of the forces will equal zero. That is the definition of equilibrium, in fact. So this will be relatively easy to solve for the unknown mass m here. Why don't we add mg over to the other side? And then we can divide both sides of the equation by g, and that way we're going to isolate the unknown mass. The value in parentheses, which we calculated earlier, can be plugged in, and then so can the value of g. And then when we simplify that, we get approximately 136 kilograms. So that would be the additional mass that we can add to the balloon, so that the balloon would then be in equilibrium.
Now, notice for part E of the question, if the mass that we're adding to the balloon were less than the 136 kilograms, the balloon would no longer be in equilibrium. With an insufficient mass, that is a mass less than 136 kilograms, the downward acting force would be smaller than the upward acting buoyant force. And so the balloon would still tend to rise upward as it had done in a previous part of this question. So that would answer part E of this question. But in part F, it asks what limits the height to which the balloon can rise. It turns out it will not rise indefinitely. And the reason is that as the balloon rises, the density of the air is decreasing. And as the density of the air decreases, the buoyant force will also tend to decrease. So eventually, as the balloon rises, the buoyant force will decrease to the extent that its magnitude, that is the magnitude of the buoyant force, will equal the magnitude of the downward acting forces. And so once again, the balloon would achieve equilibrium. So in summary, it will not rise indefinitely. It will reach a certain height that will put it back into equilibrium. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe and stay tuned for additional videos. You can also send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.